In today's video I show you how the runner's knee, also known as the iliotibial band friction syndrome, looks on MRI. I will show you some cases uh, with iliotibial band friction syndrome and how it looks like on MRI, uh, different grades, etc. And in, by the end of the video I will also show you a few differential diagnoses that you should keep in mind when assessing a knee for a iliotibial band friction syndrome. So before I show you the cases here a quick reminder of how the normal anatomy should look like on the lateral side here. So we have the knee joint, this is the lateral side, this is medial, this is the iliotibial band running down here inserting onto the tibia here on, on the anterolateral aspect of the tibia and in iliotibial band friction syndrome we have a mechanical conflict between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. So here we have a proton density fat saturated sequence and this is lateral, this is medial and you can see here the iliotibial band running all the way down onto the tibia and between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle we have this edema in the soft tissue here. I can zoom in a little bit. So this is the band, the iliotibial band and this is all edema around here consistent with the iliotibial band friction syndrome. Now you have to be very mindful and careful also not to interpret these normal recesses of the joint, of the knee joint itself as a neobursa or adventitious bursa or something like that. So this is just normal but the pathology is actually this edema around here and not this one here. That's the normal stuff. We can also nicely see this here on our uh, transverse sections, iliotibial band coming down. This here, this is the normal anterior recess here, communicating with the patellofemoral joint here. But you can see here the synovial layer and this one here, this is just the abnormal inflammation and the edema just outside of the knee joint. So this inner bright structure is uh, knee flu uh, joint fluid and the other stuff is inflammation because this patient has a runner's knee or a iliotibial band friction syndrome all the way down here all this is the pathology there so this is the second patient here and you can see we again we, this time lateral is on this side we have the iliotibial band coming down this is just a recess of the knee joint itself but between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. We can see this soft tissue edema here consistent with a iliotibial band friction syndrome here. And this time the edema is also reaching beyond the level of the lateral epicondyle here and some authors suggest that if this edema is going beyond the portion here of the lateral epicondyle then it's more likely to be a iliotibial band friction syndrome. So this is the normal recess, this is the edema reaching beyond the level of the lateral epicondyle here. And there was another study that showed that patients with iliotibial band friction syndromes have larger lateral epicondyles compared to controls. So that's another indicator that this is a mechanical uh, problem here between these two structures. And this is the third case. Again, lateral is this time here. I'll make this a little bit bigger. You can clearly see the iliotibial band coming down and again we have extensive soft tissue edema here between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. So it's a very straightforward diagnosis if it's so prominent as in this case. Um, just be careful because sometimes these recesses they are coming down all the way down here and you don't see a communication because it's compressed up here. So uh, well if you have this edema like in this case, because it's very obvious that this is not all recess, uh, it's easy, but sometimes it's not so easy. Before we move on, a quick patron update, and I would like to welcome three new patrons. This is Thomas, David and Kai. Hi guys, thanks for joining and thanks for your support. It's really great to have you and uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding Patreon, etc. Otherwise, I would suggest you go and check it out because it, uh, it's really nice for me <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how people are 
uh, willing to donate a little bit of money when basically they get all the content for free anyways. But still, there is some exclusive content that is only available for my patrons and if you want to go and check it out, go over to my Patreon page. You can see the link somewhere in the description down here below. Now what about this case here? So the difficulty with iliotibial band friction syndrome is that the patient should have pain on the lateral side of the knee joint and what will happen if you really look for this finding that frequently you see some subtle edema between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle and in your mind you're already happy and uh, you say well, wow easy case it's a lateral it's a iliotibial band friction syndrome only then you realize that the patient actually has pain on the medial side and then you are basically screwed and have to put in the report clinical correlation necessary which we try to avoid but sometimes you really have to have a clinical correlation so you can have um, soft tissue changes there very subtle and i don't think they are always are clinically significant or clinically manifest but I would still describe it and then just um, give the referring physician a note that basically if the patient has a, a pain on the lateral side at this location that would be consistent with um, iliotibial band friction syndrome but uh, that's not what I want to show you here in this case this this is just a differential diagnosis if you see something like that I already mentioned the anterior recesses that are reaching for uh, posteriorly but this structure here this time I'm scrolling through is not a, a recess it's just visible here on this one section this is actually a vessel and most likely an a vein and we can better appreciate this on the transfer sections here so this is the lateral side this is the iliotibial band coming down we can still see some of the recess here but the recess is ending here so so this is still a recess and you can see how it communicates up here so be very careful and if we go even further down you can see this prominent vein here and on the coronal section this might look as a iliotibial band um, a friction syndrome but it's actually not so this is just normal a uh, normal vessel here at this location a little bit more prominent than what you typically would expect here and then we have also the recesses here of the joint which are not uh, bursa etc etc um, also bursa are very rare um, you might get if it's really a chronic condition a adventitious bursa at this location but typically you you have more like this uh, soft tissue edema stuff and not really a proper bursa so this is lateral iliotibial band femoral condyle and we can see some fluid already in here between these two structures and if you scroll up this one is clearly a recess but then you have some membrane or something and then another fluid collection and you have to remember that you have like three millimeter um, slide thickness so you always have to go to the other uh, orientation or plane and then you will see that this is just like a synovial fold here and it's actually still part of the normal recess around this location and not a edema in the setting of a friction syndrome or an adventitious bursa and another hint to that is that the surrounding fat tissue here is completely normal so we don't have any edema outside of the synovial lining here so what did we learn this week from my perspective it's quite an easy diagnosis i'm not sure how you think about it um, i mean if you know the diagnosis basically it's a, a, a no-brainer so to say unless you fall for one of the differential diagnoses that i have shown you but i'm i'm wondering I, I went back to pubmed and had a look at the publications and basically all the original research is pretty old on this topic apart from a newer study where they assessed the height of the uh, lateral epicondyle but I'm wondering because sometimes you really see this subtle edema between the iliotibial band and the lateral condyle and I'm not sure if they are always clinically relevant. So maybe we should do a new study about it where we compare the uh, clinical relevance of these subtle findings at this location. So I must still think about it. Hmm. We'll see in the future. Basically, that's it. If you have any questions, comment below and I will answer any of your questions there. And as usual, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And see you next week.